Well, glory, glory, glory. Friends of God, welcome to this broadcast. This is going to be a game changer, a super highly anointed and powerful broadcast today. It really is a breakthrough broadcast. So friends, I want you to begin to share this on your wall because in a few minutes, we're going to have the man of God evangelist John Ramirez come. And I know many of you are familiar with who he is and with his ministry. But friends, I want you to give some hearts and lights and do consider sharing this because this is going to be a very powerful broadcast. Amen. And uh, I'm really excited about what God's doing because there is a cross pollinization or a cross streaming uh, of the different streams because, of course, every river flows in Jesus is found in Yeshua HaMashiach. So comment below where you're watching from. Give us some hearts and likes. And as you're jumping on, I want you to hashtag deliverance, hashtag deliverance, amen. Tag somebody, share this on your wall, because in a few minutes, we're going to have the man of God, evangelist John Ramirez, jump in. And of course, we want the atmosphere to be conducive as we're about to receive him. We want the numbers. We want the algorithm. We want the faith, the hunger, the honor to be up in this place. Now, people of God, continue to comment below where you are watching from. And I want to give you some shout outs as we're starting and as we're beginning. And I know we have friends on YouTube and we have friends here on Facebook as well. Amen. But comment below where you are watching from so I can give you some shout outs. And in a few minutes, we're going to have the man of God evangelist John Ramirez with us. Amen. Rashina Jackson. Amen to that. Mary, good to see you. Shatarabata. Thank you, D. Savage, Monique, Kathy, Vancouver, Canada in the house, Anita, Kashika from South Africa. I love my South Africa family. Amber from Colorado. Good to see my Grand Junction family. Catherine Cortez, Zambia, Vanessa, Breakthrough, Amen. Shazia Harun, Saliste Lopez. Stephanie Taylor, Lindewe, good to see you, friend, from Durban, South Africa. Vanessa Maestro, Yolanda, praise God. Continue to comment below where you're watching from. CJ from New York City, all right. We got NY in the house. By the way, CJ, I'm going to be ministering in New Jersey and Pennsylvania this weekend again, so I hope to see you. Krugesdorp, South Africa, Krugesdorp. I miss my South Africa family. Salamat, salamat. Wow, New York in the house again. Ottawa, Canada. Española, New Mexico. We got Puerto Rico, Boricua in the house. Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's see. Here, wow, we got Portugal, Indonesia, California, Orlando, Albuquerque, Shataraba, South Africa. Good to see our YouTube family jumping in. I want you to continue to comment and hashtag deliverance. Amen. Glory to God. Let's continue to build up the atmosphere and build up the algorithm before I bring in the man of God. And I just had such a powerful weekend in Pennsylvania and Atlantic City, New Jersey. The glory of God came forth. Miracle signs and wonders. Deliverance. There was a lady who was 92 years young named Lillian, and she got healed of bone and blood cancer right there. Incredible. She was walking around the next day totally free, without a walker, without a cane. 92, dealing with the infirmity, the spirit of cancer in her blood and bone, and the Lord healed her and touched her. Incredible. God is so good. So the Lord is moving, my friends, and I want you to continue to Share this on your wall. Praise God. If you're excited, comment below. I'm excited. Amen. And I'm telling you, friends, pastors, ministers, leaders need to tap into this broadcast today because it's going to be explosive, revelatory, and filled with the power of God. Amen. Shatarabata. Dusty, I see you. Amen. Dominican Republic. Oh, we got the DR Dominicana into his house. El Paso, Texas. Colorado Springs. Santo Domingo, Dominicana. Look at that. 
Shatarabata. Ricky Rodriguez from AZ. Glory to God. Glory to God. Claudine Carrillo, Providence Ivana. Melissa Filler, good to see the fillers. Tyler Adams, one of our favorite Safas. <laughs> Hallelujah. Becky Vasquez, amen. Monique. Shoo, glory to God. If you're excited, comment below. I'm excited. Amen. Roboso Rebe. Now, people of God, we're going to invite the evangelist in a minute. So continue to tag some friends, share this on your wall, because this is a breakthrough broadcast that you do not want to miss. We got Dallas, Texas in the house. Amen. Wow, Lebanon, Pennsylvania in the house. Good to see you, Nadine. Pastor Sharon. Glarabosa Tarabata Tarabashata. Shakaraba. Glory to God. Glory to God. Wendy Acosta says, I'm excited. Well, Mr. Dolores, is everything set up before I invite the man of God in? Wonderful. Good to see you, Becky. By the way, friends, I am returning back to Atlantic City on Wednesday, New Jersey, and back to Lebanon, Pennsylvania this weekend. East Coast, come on through. Come on and see me, my friends. It'll be pow. We're full. We got Cuba. We got the Cubanos. Northern Ireland, that is wonderful. I know we just finished celebrating St. Patty's Day. And of course, St. Patrick was a true man of God, a true apostle. Stephanie Nardone. Glory. Glory. Sonia Hall says, hi, Mr. Lawrence. Oh, thank you, Lord. Ricardo, good to see you. Vanessa says, I'm excited. Where on the West Coast? On the East Coast? You could just look at my website, benlamglobal.com. Also, Barbara, good to see you. Whenever we're ready, Mr. Lawrence, you give me the cue. Well, praise God. Friends of God, I want you to give us some hearts and lights. Come on, let's welcome the man of God, Evangelist John Ramirez. Evangelist, good to see you, sir. God bless you, my brother. Thank you so much. It's going to be good. It's going to be exciting, and it's going to be powerful. Amen. Amen and amen. Now, I just want to salute you, sir, because, I mean, you know, just getting technology set up, I mean, you know, it was a little bit of a test, but thank you for all that you're doing. We appreciate you. And man, thank you likewise. I'm excited to be on this platform. So I know God's going to do something special for everyone that is on right now. Come on. So good. Now, you're on the East Coast. I'm on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. But uh, the East Coasters love me. I'm going back for week two, back to back. And us in the West Coast, we love you. And man, it, 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 it just say God has a sense of humor, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much born and raised in the east coast i mean i was born in puerto rico age of one my parents immigrated to new york city so i can probably say i was pretty much born in the bronx and uh and then i'm on i'm on the west coast uh, doing what i do and uh everywhere else but uh west coast embraced me you know they love they they love they love me they honor me they they pray genuine wonderful people in the west coast so and the same thing with the east coast you know they love you they embrace you they genuine, so you show that there's no, there's no Tupac or Big East, you know, kind of thing going on in the kingdom, man. <laughs> Come on, so there's no Tupac, Big, you know, East Coast, West Coast beef in the nah, kingdom. No, 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 we kingdom people. And we're gonna go into that a little bit because, I mean, like like I showed with your earlier evangelist, you know, I I grew up more in a charismatic prophetic stream, mm -hmm. and then now I'm kind of in the glory stream. But, you know, it, there's no warfare between caps. I mean, it's every river, every grace is in Jesus Christ. That way, you know, uh, with the body, right? And the Bible calls us to be the body, the bride, and the army. That's it. That's what the Lord calls us, to be the bride, the, the body, and the army. There's no room for nothing else. I love that. The body, the bride, and, and the, the army. army. That's it. And... and 
And in a sense, those three realms have different functions. So the body, the bride, and the army. Is there anything you just want to quickly expound on that before we go a little deeper? We, we, we call it to be a team. We call it to be a force to be reckoned with. And I think that we, we sort of like take away from each other when we start saying, oh, you know, this deliverance ministry works this way, that one works that way. When Jesus said that we, the body have all different parts, but we work together, right? Uh, and the only person that we fight as the army, we fight the devil, because if we don't fight the devil, we end up fighting each other. Come on, so good, absolutely. Well, Evangelist, I'm so happy to connect with you. I've known about you and your ministry for a number of years. And finally, now's the time for us to connect. And I believe uh, what God's doing on the earth is very powerful because he's connecting and bringing different graces together for explosive exponential glory. And, and I think, I think uh, it takes a team to win championships, right? Uh, I remember when the, when the Yankee bought A-Rod into the Yankees, we thought we was going to win the next 10 years. We are going to win the World Series. It wasn't so because he was a one-man team. He was a one-man. He was a, a person he wanted to shine by himself. And I think we're not, the Bible says, we're not an island to ourselves. We, we need each other. We need to come together. Your, your anointing, your blessing, your gifts, your purpose, your destiny comes together with minds. And then the only person that's going to be saying, ouch, is the devil. Right. And I think that's what God called us to be, to be that body, to come together as one, you know, to represent the kingdom. We don't represent church. We represent a kingdom because when we die, we don't when we go home, we don't go home to a church. We go home to the kingdom. Come on. So good. Well, I, I, I love how we're starting right now. Evangelist, because we're, We are talking about unity. Um, but I mean, how sad is it that there is division or people will you know, rather say I'm this denomination, I'm that denomination, and then reject the graces and push people away when we're meant to operate together. I, I think I think people we 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 try to put Jesus in a box, right? And I think that the fact that when you put Jesus in a box, we we limit what God wants to do on the earth, right? Because the mission that God left here for the church is to finish what He started. Right. So 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 you didn't hear the apostles saying when it was in the book of Acts, you didn't hear the apostles saying, well, you know, I'm from Galilee and you from over there. I'm from over here and you came you came last. You know, Jesus picked me first, you know, and uh -huh. uh, and then you came in third and you came in fourth. No, man, they, they were there was a force to be reckoned with. And they had to carry a fight and anointing upon them because they were united. There's, there's power in unity, there's power in agreement. And the devil knows that. The devil knows that. So what the devil does, he puts us into compartments and he puts us into systems, you know. And yes, we understand the protocol. A person, you know, this person, uh, the nomination is this and that's that. We understand it's protocol. 1754 ministry, it's all protocol. But in the end, it's about Jesus. In the end, it's about us coming together and doing what God called us to do. And that's it. The bottom line. And we don't, we shine the best, we shine the best when we, when we unite. So good. We shine the best when we unite. That's so good. And I love what you said about protocol because, you know, when I when I started off with why I'm at a charismatic move, you know, a lot of it is very free. It can be a little bit loosey goosey without protocol. Now, in the Pentecostal or Word of Faith, there's so much protocol that maybe it could quench the spirit or quench the freedom and the move of God. I believe even in the, the dem demonic realm, Satan's kingdom, they understand a hierarchy and protocol many times even more than believers do. Made it clear, right? Jesus said the kingdom of doctrine is not divided. They're running ranks. I ran in ranks when I was 25 years in the demonic side. I ran in ranks. I ran with the demonic authority, demonic anointing, demonic fire. I ran with all that, you know, I was in the highest levels of the demonic, which is called the shadows of the demonic. So when people say, oh, you was a Satanist, I'm like, I was a Satan when I was eight years old. I was a saint when I was eight years old. I moved up the ranks to be, to, to get to the place that's called the shadows of the demonic. I'm the, I was the devil that was standing stand on your blind spot. And if you didn't have great discernment, you wouldn't see me standing there. That's the kind of demonic powers I carry and I operate and function in the spirit realm. Wow. Well, let's talk about evangelists because I know I know a little bit about your testimony and about your past. 
But you said at eight years young, you were a Satanist. And eventually you moved in a higher rank or a higher realm of the darkness of the demonic. In the demonic. So, so not only a higher level, but a higher authority to control regions and control atmospheres because it, it, it's about the regions and the atmosphere. So, so I, 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 I was in drenched in that level, but I was recruited at the age of seven and a half from the second heaven, a necklace of the seven demonic powers fell from the second heaven. I was playing in the South Bronx. My, my precious sister that does the audio and does the, the technology. The South grew up in the South Bronx over by uh, Tremont Avenue. And I, I, there was, in the 70s, it was the burnout Bronx. So there was a necklace that fell from the second heaven, which is the principalities. First heaven is, is, is a demonic kingdom. Second heaven, demonic kingdom. Third heaven is our home heaven. So necklace fell from there, hit my feet at the seven, about seven, seven and a half. I, I took it home, ran home, make a long story short, put it around my neck. I ate the eight. I was at the witch house, gained my first ceremony. Wow, you're at the witch's house gaining your first ceremony. Now, now there's so much to unpack, uh, unpack right now, evangelists. Now, friends, this is about to get really hot because we're going to go real deep. And I'm, I'm learning and I'm pulling on the man of God right now. So, friends, I want you to pull on the man of God. Let's get the numbers up because we're about to go deep right now. Now, around seven and a half and eight, you had your first ceremony. Do you think there's something significant about that age? Because we understand there is power in numbers. That's not a coincidence. Well, I think the coincidence is the devil wants to get the young generation into his kingdom because they last longer and they'll do more. And they're easy to brainwash, you know, than to brainwash some old person. So, so the, the money today, if you see the generation today, right? Who's making ruckus on the earth today? The, the, the cancer culture, the generation today, the college kids, they're the ones to upside down because the devil is using them as puppets mm. with strings and pulling them all over the place. You see the, 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 the atmosphere of the satanic demonic in the, in, in, in the industry of music, Hollywood. You see it in, the, in politics. You see it in schools. And who's, who's all surrounded? TikTok, social media. Who's the influencers today? The young people, because the devil already incarcerated them to the demonic side. Because the devil, you got to know the devil was the devil was an influencer. The devil was an influencer in heaven. That's why he was able to influence the third of the angels to fight against heaven. Wow, the devil was an influencer in heaven, and yeah. and again he's he's still influencing the young people. I mean, even drain. He, I mean, you look at YouTube. Everybody wants to be a what? An influencer. Absolutely. No one wants to be. No one wants to be an entrepreneur these days. That's like old school. <laughs> I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to own some business. Everybody's running to be an influencer. The rap world influencers. What they're doing? They're doing the devil's bidding to influence the young generation so they can drip them to the left. Absolutely, and I love that you're talking about the left because we understand the left is is demonic, but influence is originally from God because God is the God of influence. But Satan usurped it and took it and is giving influence that's manipulated. Is that correct? Nation is spread of witchcraft. We, we know that. And I think in my heart, you know, God, when God called us to the kingdom, he, give us, he gives us true thing. He gives us the ministry of Jesus, which is the gifts. Then he gives us the life of Jesus, which is the fruits of Jesus. And we, are, we function on both. But I think that we lose track about the fruits and the fruits is the life of Jesus in us. And it has nothing to do who you are and what you want to be. It has to do that we are messengers of the kingdom. We are vessels of honor for the kingdom to do the work of God left on the earth for the church. Because the church is, is the mission of Jesus on the earth. So, so I think a lot of times uh, the devil's kingdom, they have a bunch of influencers, manipulators, control, mindset control devils on that side they were, that I was. You know, I know how to control people and I know how to take the answer from your heart, which is Jesus, and put question marks. Wow. So, and how did you do that? Because it's, you know, Proverbs 18, 21 said it's power, the power of your words, you know, the power, the 18, 21 Proverbs 18, in your language, in your tongue, right? So I know how to speak a certain language with a demonic anointing because I had a ceremony done in my mouth. To speak certain word that was very yeah 
Yeah. Absolutely. People of God, continue to pray right now because the evangelist video just froze. So continue to pray for this broadcast. We, we hear you, evangelist, but we don't see you. Well, friends, I mean, this is so delicious. I'm, I'm loving every word that's coming out of the mouth of the evangelist. This is delicious. I'm, I'm like nibbling, nibbling, gobbling, gobbling. I mean, friends, this is revelation here. And of course, this is revelation, number one, that's exposing the works of the enemy, but also it's revelation about the beauty and the glory of Jesus. Because you and I, we have authority as the believer. We have authority as believers. And there's nothing for us to be afraid of, nothing for us, uh, you know, to uh, be in shock about. However, the number one rule of the art of war is to study and understand the enemy. And so this broadcast, my friends, I mean, it's going to, it's already so good and so powerful. Amen. So continue to pray to the Holy Ghost. Tag somebody. Share this on your wall. And uh, we're going to have the evangelist jump on very soon. Amen. Now, these are the days, my friends, where God is raising up modern-day Moseses to be a deliverer for the generation. And I believe there's going to be freedom deliverance in every sphere of society. I mean, look at that movie come out in Jesus' name. You know, people are having deliverance in the movie theaters. Come on. You know, in public places. I remember in Skid Row, Los Angeles. When I ministered in Skid Row, Los Angeles, people were getting delivered on the streets in downtown LA. They were falling down out on the public concrete cement floor. They were getting delivered. I mean, so this is, you know, one of the things that God's doing on the earth. And miracles, signs, and wonders, and casting out devils, are all part of the signs package. I want you to write that. Signs package, the package of signs. These signs will follow. When you preach the gospel, the lame will walk, the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will be raised, and demons will be cast out. This is part of the signs package. It's part of the whole salvation package. Amen. So there is a move taking place where we're going to see freedom, deliverance, like never before. Amen. Now, friends, we're still working on getting the evangelists on, so I want you to keep praying with us in the mighty name of Jesus. And we understand that there is warfare against technology, against the cyber waves, because the Bible says the devil is the prince of the air. So. The enemy is trying to block and sabotage the broadcast. But please bless Jesus over this. And we declare breakthrough in Jesus' name. People of God, let's welcome back and let's give the man of God evangelist, John Ramirez, he's back. Welcome back, sir. God bless you. Shatarabata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's coming back in the future. Well, glory. Welcome back, Evangelist. <laughs> Thank you. <so> much. <laughs> this is crazy, but it's all good. Amen. Amen. All good. And again, the enemy is trying to stop this broadcast through technology. He's the prince of the air. Yep. Yep, I mean, he, he trying to stop the the, the, the the anointing and the flow, but hey, in, in the fight, you're going to be more determined than the enemy. So I'm back on, so like, we're going to do this no matter what, what, how long it takes. Come on. And <laughs> I, 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 I love your spirit, sir. I love your heart, sir. Honestly, I'm impressed and uh, I'm humbled because too many people, the more God uses them, the more proud they become or the more arrogant they become or standoffish. But I don't feel that way with you at all. You know, I always say, Brother Ben, 
I would say this. I would say that when you owe Jesus Christ everything, he owes you nothing. There's nothing to be, to have pride, be proud of uh, in, a, in, a, in a sense of that you, you didn't do nothing on your own. You didn't get there on your own. You didn't earn it. You, you couldn't buy it. So you might as well humble yourself and live it and do what God called you to do. So in the end of my story, I made Jesus Christ proud that he picked me, right? Because I, the more humble you are, the more God can trust you with the kingdom. Come on. So good. Absolutely. Well, I know before uh, the break, <laughs> in a sense, you know, we were talking about Satan being the influencer of the young people, influence. But we're seeing a mighty move of God amongst the young people today. The culture of today is indated and saturated and, and, and permeated in, in the witchcraft world, right? Whether it, in witchcraft doesn't have to be human sacrifice or killing animals or blood. It, it, it is a system that the devil has made it cultural and fashionable to the today, to the, to, the, to the young generation today, because if you can buy into a system, then you, be, you become part of something that you're not even realizing it, that you're part of a kingdom, you're part of a, a demonic kingdom. The devil had different facets to his kingdom, and the devil had 21 roles to the dark side, whether it's religion, whether it's music, whether it's, uh, whether it's media, whether it's politics, the devil knows he, he has to have a, a system to snag you and incarcerate you. Wow. And, and why, why a system? I mean, of course, there's spirits that are but operating. The church, the church had the same thing, too. When the COVID-19 came, the church, everybody, was in, everybody got divided. The church got divided when COVID-19 came. Did you take the shot? Did you wear the mask? Did you did this? We, we, we got into this division and discord kind of thing because that's what they, see, Jesus was born outside of the system. Jesus was born in a major. And then Jesus died outside of the city, outside of the system. How, why? So why are we living for the system? Because only the devil lives for the system. We live for the kingdom. We honor the, 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 the laws of the land. We honor the laws of the land, but we're not part of the laws of the land because even today, you got pastors telling uh, the congregation you can sell marijuana because it's legal. It's legal here, but it's not legal in heaven. Come on. So, so you're smoking weed and you're going to hell. Come on, sir. Come you're on. going to hell. You're smoking weed. You're going to hell because God never made it legal in heaven. So, mm. what, so if, if you are heaven, if you're a child of, of heaven, then you should live by the standards of heaven, not the ones on the earth. So that means the devil owns real estate rights and the devil owns legal rights in your life. Mm. Now, let's talk about that because you just opened up another can of words, which, which I'm loving in this conversation. Some people believe and think that it's okay to smoke marijuana or have CBD because mm -hmm. you know, it's more natural and it can help fight cancer, et cetera, et cetera. You're saying if you smoke marijuana, it'll bring you straight to hell. Talk about it. I, I, because it's a drug. And, 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 I, I, you know, and it, it, people saying, well... Uh, you know, I, I have I have sickness, this kind of sickness, right? And I have to smoke my water, feel better. But gee, that sickness been around for a long time before before they, they gave you the recipe. They gave you the recipe by smoking my water, feel better. The devil understand. The devil will use doctors. Understand? The devil will use doctors, and especially unbelieving doctors, to give you stuff that's called pharmacia, yeah. that, so you can be addicted to things that really is not. You need to go higher and deeper with the Lord to trust God for your healing. And there's other alternatives that you can use, you know, that God can bless you with. I, ha I have a few eye surgeries that God had blessed me with. God could have spoke word from heaven, and I would have had 20-20. I get that, but if God wants to do a different way, I'm, I'm good with that too, as long as I get my healing and my blessing, and it can glorify Jesus. But God didn't tell you to stay home and smoke weed all day so you can feel better because you have some sickness, whatever. That's not the kingdom. Truth be told, that's not the kingdom. You've been set up, you've been lied to, and you've been entrapped by the by the files and the schemes and the wilds of the devil. Mm. Sir, you you're... smoke weed, you hide, now you want to read the Bible. Really? Come on. You you preaching real good, Evangelist. I'm loving this. And yeah, I believe there's so many lies that have crept into the church and even witchcraft and the demonic in the church, in Christian churches. Well, even, even doctors are telling you, take this medication. Take this medication. It's going to make you feel better. Really? So why are you going back for refills? Because mm. right. it's a cycle. And the same, the demonic lives in the church. The Simon's a sorcerer today, preaching, preaching a, a fake gospel. 
Mm, my goodness, Simon's and sorcerers. Talk about that. I mean, yeah. well, the Simon sorcerers today, you know, they, they, they're perverting the word of God. They separated Jesus from the cross. They separated Jesus from the cross. You can't preach Jesus without the cross. They separate Jesus from the cross. They're preaching witchcraft, manipulation, spirit, emotional systems, mo emotionalism, messages that God is not in it. God has never even validated it. They just sound good because they want likes and they, and they want social media numbers. So they preach as trash, garbage, in, in, infiltrated by the devil, the devil's mouthpiece in the church preaching. Oh, they got people line you up and so see. I thought, first, they play your emotion. Anybody here is single. I'm single. Anybody here want to get married? I want to get married. How, you want to get married? So see, thousand dollars. Come up, and and you fall into this and say, like like God's gonna get your boy ass for thousand dollars, or God's gonna get your nest for thousand dollars. That's just witchcraft. Listen, bend your knee, pray fast, and take the thousand dollars and you put it in your pocket, or give it to a ministry that's bearing fruit for Jesus. Like, you think that all you're gonna get for thousand dollars is Julio? <laughs> Santo de Dios, Santo. <laughs> Evangelist, listen, I, uh, I was Freaky Freddy, a slap willy for $1,000. That's what you're going to get. Listen, Evangelist, I wish I could throw a shoe right now. You know what I mean? You <laughs> so good right now. Oh, my goodness. Now, people, now, don't want, people don't want the truth, Pastor. People don't want the truth because the truth will set you free and transform you. People, you know, we we in that Timothy. I was reading it today in my devotion. We're in Timothy in the last days. People are going to find themselves preachers. You know why? The Bible said, "Cause my people love itself." You know, my people love itself. What What do you think? Like, in, let me, let me. If people were to boycott these preachers, they'd be out of business. We were to boycott. Say, I'm not going to your church. You're the son of the devil. Why would I go to your ministry? Why would I go to your conference? Boycott these people. It's like the baseball, the baseball arena, right? And as you said, it's quite the baseball arena. The reason these people are making crazy salaries because we're the we're the stupid ones that buy season tickets. But when you go asking for an autograph. They, they just want to they, they look at you like you're nobody but you bought it you bought tickets you bought you you go to yankee stadium you bought tickets you bought a hot dog for ten dollars you bought yourself a, a a soda for eight you bought a pretzel for nine and and, you, and you're paying you're paying these people but they don't want to give you an autograph but I, I guarantee you if everybody in the baseball arena or the football we boycott the game no one shows up for two seasons i guarantee them tickets are drop you see so we boycott these passes going to these fake churches because these are the churches that the devil is going to use in the end time to come against the remnant. They're going to say, well, Joe Olsen is preaching homosexuals go to heaven. Why are you ain't preaching that same thing? He's a Christian. You're Christian. No, he's a wannabe. He's a Christian Dior. He's not a real Christian. Ah. So, 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 so basically, so they're going to use Joe Osteen to come against people like me, Pastor Ben, because we want to preach the truth and get you to heaven. My goodness. You preach him, man. You preach him. I'm telling you, these are the days where there is more and more separation. And what I realized, evangelists, I mean, of course, you go into every region territory. I mean, I've been in 56 countries. I mean, you go to Korea, you go to Uganda, Congo, all different demons. But I realized some of the worst demons are in churches and in elders and pastors. Same system. Because if you go, like you said, you've been around the world, but if you see the famine of God's word in all the churches today. I had a young girl. I was in I was in Nashville not too long ago, about, about, about maybe two months ago, and I was preaching in Nashville on a Monday. 900 people came on a Monday night to Nashville to, to hear me preach, right? And there was a young girl from South Korea. She took a plane, one luggage, ended up in Nashville for deliverance. Come on. And, and, and she, had, she didn't have money to get back. The Lord said, pay for her ticket. I paid $900 to buy her plane ticket to get back. Why? Because it's, she's God's kid. She's my sister. I'm my brother's keeper. I didn't care about, I didn't say, well, in the past, this was so generous. They paid for her hotel. They paid for food. Then we embraced her. We loved on her. And we made sure she got home safe. That's the church of Jesus Christ. Wow. My goodness. Evangelist, I'm being moved right now. I, I feel the presence of the Lord so strong right now. Um, and I just want to say, wow, 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 wow. We welcome you. We love you, sir. You know, something happened, and we're, we're, we're just flowing with the Lord. It's so powerful. And I don't want, you know, I, 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 we talk, I'm not boasting. I'm just saying this what God called us to do. And I, I'm, I've got nothing against Joe Osteen. I like Joe Osteen. And I like Joe Osteen for the simple fact that as a young, if I was a young Christian, he, he'll fit the script. And I like Osteen. I have my respect for Osteen because he don't pick nobody. He bought everything he owns. He, he buy from his book royalties. 
my respect for all state. But you can't tell people that are watching you and God giving you a platform that Absolutely. it's okay to be homosexual and you're going to heaven. That blood is going to be on your hands. Mm, my goodness. Well, thanks so much for clarifying that, sir. Absolutely. I, I love Joel Austin, too, and he comes from a great lineage. And the Lord is using him in his lane, and we're all going to be responsible at the end of the day. But there are doctrines of demons, and there is a twisting of the scripture because people are afraid of the left, and they're afraid of that demonic spirit. So they just, when people say there's many ways to have it, that's doctrine of demons. When people like Osteen, because he don't have a backbone, and I'm going to be very honest, I'm, I'm very transparent because he's afraid of saying Oprah that homosexual people is a sin, right? So, so, so this is my, 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 point. my point is, my, my, my point in the whole, the whole topic is, is preach the truth. And let the chip fall where they fall. And, 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 and the, the, whole, the whole scenario on the platform of the God giving me, God giving you, we're going to have to give God an account, right? We're going to have to give God an account for what, the time he gave us on the earth that we glorify his son, Jesus Christ, through the gospel. And, and that's, the, that's, the, that's the, 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 the fear of God. And the fear of God means, you know, Lord, I don't want to disappoint you. I'm going to say what you want me to say because I'm just going to trust you because I don't live by the opinions of people. I live, I live by the, by the word of God in what, in what I'm supposed to represent heaven on the earth. Not, nothing against no pastor, no preachers, none like that. But the truth is, you know, the truth is that we have been told to preach the truth, not facts. Facts are doctrines of devils. The truth, the truth will transform and set people free. Come on. So good. And, and here's the thing evangelist, because. God can take away the platform that he gave to any man or any woman if they use it for the wrong reasons. But the How scary part, the scary part is this. This is the scary part. In the book, the book of Matthew 14, right? People came up and they 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 case they case against Jesus. They said, We cast out devil, we did miracles, we prophesied. And Jesus said to them, Get away from me. I didn't know you. Right? Mm -hmm. What would Jesus say that to the people that prophesied, cast out devil, and did miracles? Why? Because they were relying on the gifts, confusing the gift with the fruits. And Jesus said they will know you by the fruits. And mm -hmm. the bottom line was that they were they were holding on to the gifts, but no fruits. So so basically, we we are called to bear fruit for the kingdom. So the fruit is the ministry of Jesus. The gifts are the of Jesus' ministry, but the fruit is the life of Jesus in you. Wow. That's so good. That's so good. You know, a lot of today, we have a lot of ministers that have no fruits. So what they have gifts and influential. And, and of course, yeah. And of course, the enemy, I mean, the devil, I'm mean, look at Satan. Satan said to Jesus, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world, all the riches of the earth. And so people, and the point I want to make here, Vangis, is a lot of people think that just because there's success or the illusion of success and influence, then God must be blessing them or God must be behind them. That's not true. That's not true. The devil know how to bless his kid. Ask Jay-Z, ask Beyonce, ask these people. Oof. The devil know how to bless his children, right? Because if you if you look at the life of Katy Perry, look at the life of Jay-Z, Beyonce, Jennifer Lopez, Mark Anthony, these, these are sickness people. They worship the devil through what their lifestyle and the music and who they represent. There's nothing on them that represent Jesus. I don't care if Eminem go up there and sing a Jesus song. That don't mean nothing to me because Eminem is not even a believer. Eminem is the son of the devil. And I have nothing against Eminem. I pray for his salvation. I pray that he will meet Jesus one day. No problem with him. I have no problem with no rappers, Latin singers, or anything, or any person that has a, a, a platform in Hollywood. I have nothing against those people. But the bottom line is, the bottom line, you, your influence is not reaching people to go to, to the cross. Your influence is sending people to hell. Mm -hmm. Hell's a real place. I went to hell when I died in my apartment in 1999, ended up in hell, met Jesus Christ, and came back as a believer. So hell is a real place. Hell is not something that no person, no person, no human being, even your worst enemy should go to hell. Believe me. Wow. Now, can, can you describe that encounter? You went to hell. How long were you there for? Do you feel believe? I don't, I don't even know how long I was there because there was, there's no time in hell. You, you're out of time. So you're out of time. So I, when I, when I, I, I remember I was being, 
I heard the voice of God for the first time about a week before I went to hell. Uh, I heard the voice of the Lord for the first time uh, audibly. He said to me, I was, actually, I came from a club recruiting uh, people the night before because I would go to the clubs, lounges to put witchcraft on people. That was my assignment, to recruit people. I was an evangelist for the dark side for 25 years. So that was my job, to recruit people, control atmosphere, control region, because if I can control the atmosphere in the region, and then I control the people, and I control the, the geographic uh, locations. That was my job, astral projecting, animal blood, all satanic altars, satanic kingdoms. I know how to run. I had a contract with demonic demons. I had a contract with Jezebel. I had a contract with Ahab spirits, infirmity devils. I had a contract with jail that I can do witchcraft and put people in jail. I have I have premature death contract with demons and, and principality. I had contract with all that. 25 years and I got married in Halloween. I had a, a demonic wedding. I, I had I did everything in the demonic side, complete and fully to, to 25 years into into Jesus uh, knew my address and and took me to hell and brought me back. So 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 this I'm talking to you from a person that lived it. I ain't read a book. I lived there. For 25 years i know how to i know how to put makeup to it i know how to dress it up and i know how to sell it to you like it was something that you needed and it was based on the on based on the, the theology of religion wow now evangelist can we go a little bit longer i know we said we want to release you at the 45 minute mark can we go to the hour mark here yeah sure i mean this is this is just so rich this is just so rich and people of god if you're enjoying this broadcast Comment amen and share this on your wall friends because the evangelist is going deep and he's just pouring out his heart here Now I want I want to ask you two questions evangelist um, You said that you had power to control regions and atmospheres What region or atmosphere? Did you have most power or control over if, oh, if oh, anyone's they get anyone the devil sign me to Anyone that ever gave me authority over, right? So you see the news, right? You see the changing of the guards. The changing of the guards of demonic principality, the shift, the atmosphere shift, different location. There's witches and warlocks operating in satanic altars doing these shiftings. And the shiftings are, the shifting are, we see, uh, let's just say, use Black Lives Matter. We see a crime over here. And then before you know, it's in, it's in Ohio, and then it shifts over to Florida, and then it shifts over to, uh, let's say, Tampa, or shift over to New York City, or shift over to California. It's the same crime. It's the same system operating in different atmosphere, attacking different people. And I, and the reason I use like Black Lives Matters, it's not. It, I, I grew up in the ghetto. I'm more black than a black person. I grew up in the South Street of New York City. I mean, me, me, my, my black brother, we ate each other's house. We slept in each other's house. And we had a few Dominicans in, in, in the Bronx. And we had Puerto Ricans and black. We grew up as a family, united, loving each other, having each other's back, playing sports, doing that. We saw the, we saw the cops that came and beat us up for no reason. We saw the cops that if you look at them, they would tell, what are you looking at? And they'd come out their cars and beat you down. And back then, those cops were real. They were like, Six feet, six two, six three, six four. Now we got we got um, hamburger helper being a police officer. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so I get all that, but I also see the system of the demonic with Antifa, Black Lives Matter, yep. burning burning our neighborhoods, burning our places, operating in the demonic over over what mammon, the devil of money, mm. operating in these things. And because if, if light, if to them, black life matters, then we can take the church to Chicago. We can take it to Baltimore, where black and black crime is the highest. And we can stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters yeah. here and Go believe on. God to bring down, to destroy the atmospheres and then the demonic altars in that area. We do it in the spirit. We pray and we believe and we can, we could be our brother's keeper in those areas because I understand the fact I understand police brutality, but I also understand there's good cops out there. And there's good, it's like saying good doctors, there's bad doctors. They're good lawyers, they're bad lawyers. But the devil use systems to control, to conquer and divide the humanity. And the same thing he did with the church when the COVID-19 came. And these are the things that we have to be very careful. The Bible said they will know you by the love that you have for each other. And the greatest thing I would have been known for not about writing books, writing eight books or whatnot. 
I'm all to, to write if God allows me to. But I want to know that I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I was genuine. And I stood in the gap for them. And I prayed for them. And I believed God for them. And I preached the truth. So your blood will not be in my hands. You might get mad at me, but I'll see you on Hallelujah Boulevard when we get to heaven. Ooh, come on. Hallelujah Boulevard. Amen. <laughs> now, now, Evangelist, I mean, this, this is just so powerful. I'm I'm getting so blessed, so moved. Honestly. It's like one, one thing I share, the Captain Crick situation we talked yeah. about, right? I, I love Captain Crick. I respect her. I, I, I respect her. I've been in her ministry. I've seen the anointing this young lady carry. I've seen the call of God. But I, I also, I, I love my other brothers and sisters in the, in the faith, in, in, in the ministry. You know, I, I love the, my other brothers and sisters in, in deliverance. You know, I love the Danny Adams. You know, I validate him. I validate the Paganis. I validate the Isaiahs, the Blads. I validate them. They're the real deal. They're the real deal. You know, they, they are the real deal. The Jenny Weavers, they're the real deal. I respect and honor, but let's not let the devil use us to, so we can cut each other's throat. Wow. You know? Because God called us. I never seen a demon from the, from Genesis from Genesis to Revelation. I never seen a demon fight another demon. So now we now we're gonna fight each other over over what? Because we got different anointing, and God called us to do deliverance in different ways, in yeah. different ways. God called us for us to do deliverance in different way. You just say you was here in the East Coast and you did deliverance. A ninety some year old lady got healed, and okay. so I'm a, I, so I'm act like a Pharisee and say, well, you should have done deliverance the way I do it. I don't know why you did it that way. Really? Wow. No. You have a different anointing. You have a different calling. You have a different purpose and a destiny. But you know why it complements each other. And I have it. And God called you to do something. And you do it. You run your race. I run mine. And we shame the devil together. So when the Catherine Kick, Crick thing came up, I even endorsed her book. And in, in, uh, it's, it's coming out soon, her book. I endorsed because I believe that she'd been called. I believe that God had hand upon her. She might, I, I tell you right now, she sure. does deliverance a lot better than me. You know, she, I seen her do deliverance, cast out demons like, you know, like nothing. You know, I might, like, God gave her a, a sweet anointing. And I got, I got to wrestle with demons on the floor, you know, but they come out anyway. I'm cool with that, but we complement each other. So I'm a, and again, a deliverance ministry is, is a small ministry. It's not a big ministry. You, you got the lot, you got Greg Lot in uh, Nashville. You got the Paganis in the Bronx. I love Pagani. He, me and him are boogie down Bronx. You know, we, 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 like, we, like, we like the Sons of Thunder. I love the Pagani. I love Isaiah in, out in California, you know, up in north of California. I love Black out in Seattle, Washington. I love Danny Adam. I believe he lives in Florida. Jenny Weaver lives in Florida. You know, but why we, why we align the devil to, to use it to turn on each other? Because the, de the devil is afraid of us. And the devil knows that we, we waste time to turn on each other. You know, the devil knows all because she got a whacked out, so 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 called whacked out uh, spiritual father. You know, I guess that was the reason. Am I sure? I guess that was the reason. But who am I to tell her? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not the Holy Spirit to tell her what she needs to do. She needs to talk to the Holy Spirit about what she needs to do. As long as you're running right, you, you're running your race and you're doing it right, you're honoring God. I see the fruits. I'm cool with that. You know, I can't control who you have in your life and don't have in your life. That's not my job to control. My job is to team up with you and do kingdom work. Wow. Well, Evangelist, I mean, thanks so much for bringing all this up. You know, I knew Catherine when she was much smaller and not as influential. I mean, she used my church building in Koreatown, Los Angeles for about a month. And so I knew her many years ago and it's interesting to see the progress of people right i mean they're still around and they're being used of god i believe she is called of god i believe so um danny adams is called are we all perfect call? and are we all mature are we all perfect and are we all mature no we're all no, growing we're growing. We're growing we we all growing we all grow we all stepping into the fullness of what god has to us and we'll complete we'll be complete when we get to heaven but you know there's things there's, we are going to be different with different flavors for heaven you know, we better we better than Baskin Robbins. Come on, so good. Yeah, we got more flavors than Baskin Robbins and Ben and Jerry's, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I want to say this because, you know, I, I understand the need to correct and the need to rebuke and the need to bring clarity to the overall body. But let's talk about speaking against a man or woman of God. I mean, because that's happening so much in this politically correct 
opinionated social media world where everybody has an opinion about something. My, my, I use myself as an example, right? When I say things about Osteen, I seen him on TV saying, at his own confession, own mouth saying, it's okay, homosexual people going to heaven. I'm upset with that. I'm, I'm upset with that because I'm saying, what about you have hundred homosexual people watching you right now? There were, I, I, got thing, I got this thing, it's called Spiritual Warfare Boot Camp, right? Uh, on Spiritual Warfare Boot Camp. I remember uh, I do a Zoom meeting twice a, a month for the, for the, I think once a month for the Spiritual Warfare Boot Camp people that they sign up. There was a homosexual person took it. He wasn't even saved. He took the Spiritual Warfare Boot Camp. He came on the Zoom and I was talking to many people and he, it was his turn to come on to ask a question. And he came on, he said, he said, I took your boot camp because I, 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 I want to get rid of my boyfriend. And you know what I said to him? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't come and say, well, you're going to hell, you're homosexual. I didn't go that route. I said, let's do something better. Let's use the boot camp to get rid of your lifestyle. Come on. You know, and let Jesus, the love of Jesus come into your heart and transform you. And he was so blessed. He said, no Christian ever talked like that to me before. Right. So, so I, 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 I need to, I need to correct it. It's like the Christians, they got Christians that, you know, we don't talk about. They have a lifestyle of living with someone under the same roof. Right. And I'm sure if you have, if, if you live under the same roof, there's sexual morality going on. Right. And I'm not judging them either, but you know, that, that is another lifestyle in the church today. Right. And no one's calling out, but we can call out the homosexual people. It's easy to do that. than call out the person that, is in the house of God that's coming to church on Sunday with his girlfriend, but they live together, Go right? On. I'm sure they don't have bunk beds and separate rooms, Go right? But, I mean, it would be hard for me to live with, if I had a girlfriend, it would be hard for me to live with her. If I'm attracted to her and the nighttime come around, my heart is thinking, my mind is thinking, you know, I would like to be in a room with her. That truth be told. So I'm saying this, we need to tell the truth in love. So when Osteen gets up there and say, there's many ways to heaven, or uh, uh, you have people de uh, depleting the gospel for gain. Then I have a problem with that. I have to, I have to, I'm the watchman on the wall. I have to say something, not against the person, but against the theology, the mindset, and the demonic that's going on. Mm. To warn the believer sounding the, the trumpet, the watchman on the wall, like a Nehemiah said, don't go that route. Don't believe that because that's not going to get you closer to the Lord. That's my story. But I, I'm not going to trash your ministry i'm not going to come against your ministry to shut it down because you disagree with me that's my job is not to do that my job is to call out well you know expose the deeds of darkness expose the deeds of darkness that's that's if i have to expose the deeds of darkness even on myself i do it and then i don't have a problem repenting i don't have a problem because repenting is a good thing come on so good repenting is a good thing and and here's the thing i mean Every single one of us were growing and we're yes. in love. And one thing I really appreciate about you, Evangelist, again, when when you posted your post publicly with Catherine Crick and you posted about that love, that moved me. And I said, Evangelist John is a true man of God. He's a true man of God. Love each other. We we a team. We call to you know, we call to love each other. I, I can disagree and agree with you in theology or whatever, but I still love you. We still can share the battlefield. I'm okay. I'm 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 going to places this year and, and I'm not gonna get into details that the people that are gonna be preaching on the same platform are not really uh walking straight with the Lord. All right. They're not they 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 they're preaching something that is really very, very uh gross uh error. They're wow. preaching, uh, they pre but I'm going there to minister. I don't know what God's going to do, Come on. but I'm still going to show up and minister. And if I meet them, I love on them, you know, and if God has a word for me to give them, I give them a word in love. Say, you know, like my brother, sister, you know, check in with the Lord, you know, what, what's going on, you know, what's wrong. Why, why, why are you letting the enemy take you that direction? My job, it was, you know, my, you say, if I'm doing something, I want someone to come up to me and say, Hey, you know, John, you know, you, you're taking the wrong route. What's going on? You, you know, sit down and talk. I want someone to talk to me. I, I'd rather you talk to me and make heaven than I miss it and go to hell. Even Paul says, Paul say, I checked myself, and, you know, that I preached to the multitude, and, yeah. I, and I'd be disqualified. Come on. Wow, so good. Evangelist, 
this this whole broadcast has been so rich. I appreciate who you are. And we have a meeting coming up. Hey. Absolutely. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're going to be with us and me and Jake Hamilton at the end of April in Orange County, California. Now, uh, Open Heavens, Power and Glory, it's going to be at my church in Orange County, California. You, myself, and Jake Hamilton, worship artist extraordinaire for three days. It's going to be powerful. Uh, why, why don't you invite the people, Evangelist, to come? You know, my, I don't have the schedule on me right now. My, my phone is wiped out. But I tell you, go to johnramirez.org. Look it up, and it's going to be powerful. Listen, I always say this. When God created God moment in open heaven over your life in a place that you can get to, don't miss it. You don't know when you're going to get your next God moment. I believe in my heart in April, it's going to be powerful. It's going to be transforming. It's going to be riveting to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. To your ministry, to the ministry God put together. We coming together under one roof to do one thing, to destroy the works of darkness and set the captives free. And I believe in my heart, it's gonna be anointed. Go to my website, it's gonna be there. You're gonna be blessed. Wow, wow, wow. Absolutely. There's you, you, you have the information on you. I don't have it right yes, now. Sir. But... Yes, sir. April 27th, 28th, 29th. And uh it's uh, we have it's all evening meetings. We do have special VIP Friday afternoon with all the speakers, like a private panel, and that's VIP. So that that's going to be powerful, absolutely. Very powerful, very powerful. You know, so, because you're going to have all these anointings sitting up there. We we we're going to ask a question. We're going to love on people, and we're going to pray for people afterwards. I believe in my heart. We we in some serious times right now. We in some serious times. The only way you're going to make it. In, in to finish the race is to, to really have an encounter with Jesus and and, sh and shed and, and destroy the worship the devil. Was it generational? Whether it's whether it's doors that you open, things you're entertaining, things that you're watching, things that you're doing. It's time to give a devil an eviction notice. And we gave you the address, but we have a whole bunch of eviction notice to bring to the devil that, that weekend. Come on, so good. Evangelist, we can't wait to have you uh, at April 27th, 8th and 9th, Orange County, California. Are you flying in? Are you driving in? Swimming in? Driving in. I'll be, I'll be over by Orange County. I'm going to get my address. I got, <laughs> yeah. I got people showing up here in Manhattan and where I'm at thinking this is my home church. And they show up and, uh, you know, it's a whole different story. But again, you know, come to the meeting and have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't miss God's. Don't miss open heaven. Open don't heaven. You can miss, you can lose money, you can lose friendships, but don't miss God's opportunities over your life because you don't know when they're going to show up again. And this is a God moment, us being together. Absolutely, that this is so powerful. Man of God, can you release a prayer of blessing over the people and then uh, we're going to release you? Amen, amen. I just want to let the people, I don't know how many people are listening to, how many people are on right now, but you know, this is a moment that you could say, Lord, show me. Let me let me see what I'm missing, what I need. Help me get to this meeting. Help me have an encounter with you. Help me go deeper with you. Help me to, to, to know you deeper and higher. This is the time that we are not holding on to a building. We are wanting an encounter with the Holy Spirit. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, my brother Ben, Pastor Ben, and I, we come in agreement. There's power in agreement. There's power in with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Every tormenting devil, every fear devil, every doubt, every unbelief devil, they're stopping people to come to this meeting. We destroy those things right now. I pray people will sign up by the hundreds, the thousands that come to this meeting, even though we have to take it to the streets in the name of Jesus Christ to glorify your name and put the devil. Uh, right now, put the devil, we give them, a, we put them on notice. The evictions are happening those three days. Father, we just pray that anyone's listening that needs a touch from you, that needs an anointing, a greater anointing in their life today, a word from heaven. Father, we release these things upon them today in the unmatchable name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on. Amen and amen. Evangelist John, thanks so much. We love you, sir. We can't wait to have you. Amen. God bless you. Love you, Pastor Ben. Thank you so much for having me on today. It's been, it been an absolute pleasure, and my brother, you're anointed, and uh, you, you have a, your church is a remnant. Oh, thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Happy, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. People of God, give the man of God a mighty clap. I mean, that was no joke. That was no joke. It went over and above what I expected. I'll tell you that. Over and above what I expected. Now, are you going to come to the conference? You yourself, if you're not going to be there 
physically, you could sign up for online, all right? It's going to be powerful. Myself, Jake Hamilton, come on, and Evangelist John Ramirez, three powerhouses coming together at the same time. Wow, wow, wow. Friends, you don't want to miss it. So sign up now, and we'd love to see you in person. Like I said, there's going to be a private VIP session on Friday afternoon. And, uh, I mean, it's going to be a game changer. If you're coming or if you're going to join online, say, I'm coming or I'm joining. Amen. Say, I'm coming and I'm joining. Because this is going to be game changer. Many of you that follow me, you know who I am. You know what I carry, what I walk in. And also, you've heard it. You've heard and felt from the man of God, Evangelist John Ramirez, who he is, what he's carrying. Wow. And Jake Hamilton, my goodness. It is going to be a God moment. Amen. It's going to be a God moment. So if you're coming or if you're joining, just comment below. I'm coming or I'm joining. Hallelujah. Join online. Join in person. It's going to be a game changer. Amen. Now, friends of God, before we go into any other announcements and we close today, I do want to open up a time for you to sow. Amen. Sow into this atmosphere. So into the man of God, the men of God, and so and be part of this harvest. I believe we're in the greatest harvest of souls ever. So I want to give you an opportunity to sow. And as you sow, I want you to comment below. Uh, I want you to comment below favor in Jesus name, favor in Jesus name, amen. because I believe there's favor in his broadcast. I believe there's favor. So if you're coming forth uh, and sowing unto the Lord and blessing the name of the Lord and blessing the work of his hands, this ministry, I want you to say favor in Jesus' name. Just comment below favor in Jesus' name. We have posted the ways to give. Of course, you could go to our link tree. You could go to our website, bellamglobal.com. We're even posting and pinning it on both broadcasts right now. But comment favor because I'm believing that there's going to be favor. Favor, favor, that's going to be poured out upon your life. Amen. Child of Most High, favor. Anna Maria, Carolyn Ward, Myrna. Amen. I love favor de Dios. Amen. Anna, Sonia. I love people are writing, I'm coming, I'm joining. Come on, somebody. And you need to, you need to invite your friends. It's going to be a game changer. I really hope that most of, I really hope that my followers, you know, from all these hubs will begin to join and come be a part of this powerful, powerful impartation and move of God. Thank you, Violet. God bless you. Thank you, Weaver. God bless you. Marilyn, God bless you. Amen. That's right. So in Jesus' name. Amen, Mary. We can't wait to see you. Amen. Rebe Leoban Teledi. God bless you. Shara Baba, CC, Lily, DC, Emmy. My goodness, the Lord is good. Jababatata. Jababata. Anna Ramirez, God bless you. You have the same last name as Evangelist John. <laughs> Fuego. Seth Hansen says, I'll be there, brother. Amen. Bless you. Can't wait to meet and greet you. Amen. Carmen, Ellie Rodriguez, Sonia Ha, Jesus Flores. Thank you, Lord. Wow, I mean, Evangelist John just knocked it out the park. He really didn't even give me any time to speak. I mean, he was just, just firing bullets, you know, just firing. <laughs> so good. Oh, wow. Wow, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for his life, for his ministry. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Continue to sow. I'm going to leave up the link. And the graphic for you to sew, I'm going to leave it there for a bit more. Ricardo says, I'll be there Saturday night. Wonderful. Tyler Adam, bless you, my friend. Amy Duplantz says, I already have tickets. Amen. God bless you. Shut ta ta Yeah, I think the early bird just ended last night, unfortunately. So, sorry, guys. Ellie Rodriguez, God bless you. Esther 414, God bless you. Will it be recorded? Yes, it will be live streamed 
but you need to register online to be a part of the online stream. And Elder Rodriguez says, I'm coming. Amen. Shatatarababa. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Well, thank you everybody for sewing today and for joining. Thank you, Nanis. Nancy, excuse me. I want to thank everybody for joining. Real quick, I want to go into some announcements here. But friends, if you enjoyed this broadcast, share. Tag somebody. And why don't you give me a follow and a like. Give this page a like and a follow. And of course, even Evangelist John Ramirez's page. Wow. Oof. That was so finger licking good. So good. Amen. Scrum diddly umptious. Wow. Morsels of revelation and glory just being poured out. But if you love the content uh, on this page, give us a like on YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Go ahead and follow us. Amen. And we can't wait to see you for our conference. Let's go into some announcements before we close. Uh, this week, I'm going to be in Atlantic City area, Mays Landing, New Jersey, one more time. We had a powerful turnout just this last week. And so I'm going back to the East Coast. Amen. So go ahead and join me, Mays Landing, New Jersey, which is an Atlantic City, Ocean City area in South New Jersey. So East Coasters, come out and see me, my friends. I would love to see you Wednesday, March 2-2, one night only with myself, Dr. Ben Lim. Amen. Um, right after that, I am going to be in Lebanon, Pennsylvania again for week two. I mean, God moves so powerfully. The Lord moves so mightily. The Lord moves so mightily. So I want you to come and see me in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. I mean, Thursday, we had, what, 67 people. Saturday, it grew up to 160. I believe this weekend... It's going to be super packed and standing room only. So go ahead and join us, my friends, because these meetings in the East Coast and Pennsylvania are shifting a region. So if you need a miracle, if you need the Lord to touch you, I'm telling you, don't miss out and be a part of God's move. Amen. Um, the week after that, actually next week, I'm going to be in Hawaii. And uh, it's still not too late for you to buy tickets and to fly out to Hawaii. Amen. So I'm going to be in Hawaii and uh, with Dr. Robert Lairdon. He is the author of God's Generals, another powerful man, another general. And uh, you can be uh, on the online school. We're going to do three days of intensive on the glory. And in the evenings, our free meetings open to the public. So it's going to be powerful. Myself and Dr. Roberts, who knows that we need to pull on the generals and the fathers and mothers of the faith right now. Because these are critical times where batons and mantles are being passed out. So join us. It's still not too late. The three-day intensive for myself and Dr. Roberts Lerden will be a game changer. You can even join online if you'd like. Right after that, we will be in another island, the big island in Hilo, Hawaii. Myself and Dr. Roberts doing a two-day kingdom intensive. In Oahu, we're going to talk about the glory. In Hilo, we're going to talk about the kingdom, leadership, the apostolic fivefold, et cetera, et cetera. So do join us. And, of course, April. April 27, 28, 29, join us in Orange County, California. Open heavens, power, and glory. My goodness, this is with myself, Evangelist John Ramirez, and Jake Hamilton. Three days in the glory. Wow, wow, wow. These three power, I mean, it's going to be life-changing. You don't want to miss it. Drive in, fly in, swim in, crawl in, do whatever you need to do. Or you could watch the online and register at benlamglobal.com. Amen. And we do have VIP panel on Friday afternoon. That's going to be so powerful. Woo. My goodness. Shakata. So join us, friends. Can we?
we can see you then. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And as well, I would invite you to be a part of my private online mentorship group called 7M Glory Equip. Man, these people in 7M, this online group mentorship, they are powerful, so powerful. And I would love to mentor you, pour into you, disciple you, walk with you. And if you join this mentorship group, we have at least two Zooms every month. And also you join a private Telegram group that builds community and connectivity with the different members. You also have more access to me, and I would love to mentor you, to cover you, to pour into you. Join 7M Glory Equip. Let's continue growing in the glory of God. Amen. Now, friends, thanks so much for joining. Love you. I see you, Pastor Randy, and I'll be with you in April as well. But do consider giving us a like and a follow here on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. Wow, wow, wow is all I have to say. Love you, bless you, and I'll see you back in the East Coast this week. Thanks for joining. Thanks for sharing. And see you soon. God bless. Mm -hmm.